first thing you need to do is do a tension gauge for your yarn and your machine. I use I Love This Yarn with a two and a half key plate. I wanted my stitches a little bit tighter so that when I unraveled the edges they wouldn't be too loose. Um, I had, I don't remember what the gauge was, but I used 36 needles for each panel and I knitted 300 rows and I got the length that I needed. So um, just do the math and figure out how, how many needles you need for the width of each panel. And um, But for the sample today, I'm only going to do a few needles just to show how to do the latch up technique. You're going to need to start with a closed edge cast on. I like using a cast on rag and ravel cord. So I'm going to hang my cast on rag now on a few needles. For my afghan I made five panels with 36 stitches each. So I think I'll just cast on about 20 needles. I'm going to continue hanging my cast on rag and then I'm going to do a row of Ravel card. I hung my cast on rag on 20 needles and I'm making sure that there's one loop per needle and that I didn't double up anywhere. And I'm going to knit across with some Ravel cord and end with my carriage on the right because I'm right handed and I like to do my e-wrap cast on from that direction. Hang a little bit of weight on that ravel cord because it's very slippery. And I'm going to do a knitted back e-wrap and I'm just going to put my yarn in the carriage just to keep it out of my way. I'm going to hang some weight on the end of my tail. And I'm going to e-wrap that first needle and then come up between the second and third needle and just knit that back. And there's other videos you can watch on how to do this. But I like this one because it gets my first row knitted and it puts my needles back into working position. So all my needles are ready to knit now. I've set my row counter to zero and I'm going to knit a multiple of three rows. It doesn't really matter because you can fudge at the end if you have more or less loops than you actually need. Um, for the afghan that I did, I did 300 rows or I knitted 300 rows. You can measure as you go and stop when you get the length that you need, but just make a note of the row count so that you can do every panel the same length. So I'm going to knit a few rows now just for this sample. When you're knitting your panels, the right panel, when you're looking at the right side of the afghan, the right panel is joined on the left side. The center panels are joined on each side of the panel and the left panel is joined on the right. So when you're knitting your panels and you're leaving two of the stitches on the edge to uh, ravel down, you need to keep in mind which edge you're working on. So I'm going to choose um, this panel that I'm working on as my right panel and keeping in mind that it needs to be joined on the left side. Okay, I'm choosing this panel to be my right panel and then I'm going to work my way across the afghan towards the left. And if you get confused about which side that you need to leave 
some stitches unbound just flip it over to the right side and I know that my right panel needs to be um, joined on the left side so I'm going to drop the stitches on the left side of this panel so this edge is going to be my left side of the right panel so what I need to do I need this yarn that's attached to my carriage I need this to use as a bind off yarn so I'm going to go ahead and unknit those last two needles and I'm going to take a marker or you can run thread through here or yarn just to hold it it doesn't matter if they drop now but I don't like them to drop until I'm ready to start that step so I like to just go ahead and then also it keeps me on track when I see this marker I know that that's the right hand panel so that's what you do for that one I only need the end ones the end ones um, drop so I'm gonna measure out a length of yarn to do my back stitch bind off and I'm gonna use three times the width of my project go ahead and cut the main yarn I'm not going to take a lot of time showing how to do the back stitch bind off but whatever bind off you choose, just end your carriage on whatever side you need it to be to do your bind off. If you were chaining this off with uh, just chaining each loop together, your carriage would need to be on the left. But for my bind off, I'm just going to start on the right with this third needle because these two needles do not need to be bound off because I'm going to be dropping those stitches. When you finish your bind off, <coughs> go all the way to the last stitch on the left go all the way through that stitch but don't drop your work off the machine and that's another reason why I'm doing the back stitch bind off because I want to use this piece as my next cast on rag so I don't have to rehang a cast on rag but if you're using a different bind off then um, you'll have to start over with a new cast on rag so I'm going to work all the way to the end with this bind off Okay, I finished the bind off. I'm leaving this tail because we'll work it in later at the end. I'm going to pull out the ravel cord that I used with my cast on rag in the beginning and I'm going to drop that cast on rag off because I need this ravel cord. And now I don't need the cast on rag for this next step because I'm using this knitted piece as my cast on rag. It saves you one step between the panels. So for each one of my panels I'm going to do the bind off without dropping the work off the machine and then I'm going to knit a row of ravel cord between each panel so that I can pull the ravel cord out and um, drop separate each piece from each from the the next one if that makes any sense. So now I can do another closed edge cast on just like I did in the beginning put some weight on here but again I want my carriage on the right so I'm going to do that same e-wrap cast on for my next panel but I'm going to change colors of yarn and I'm going to do a, uh, a center panel I'm going to do going to knit this panel right here uh, that you have to drop the stitches on either side. So let me cast that color on and um, I'll come right back. Okay, I finished the same number of rows that I did on the first panel. So I can pull the ravel cord out just like I did for the cast on rag and separate the two panels from each other. And so this is my right hand panel and you'll see the stitches that I left unbound on the left hand side of that panel. It looked like this on the machine. And there's my, my bind off and my e-wrap cast on. So I'm going to set that panel aside for now and I'm ready to bind off this um, interior panel. And I need to leave 
two stitches on each end to unravel. So I'm going to get some stitch markers. I always like to end with my carriage on the right. So whether you use a multiple of three or not, always, um, if you're going to do this particular method of bind off, um, end your carriage on the same side for every panel. And I like mine on the right. So I'm going to unknit these last two so I can make them live. Stick a marker in there to hold them. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other end because this is an interior panel and it needs to be joined on the left and the right. So when I do my bind off this time and for the, all of the interior panels I'm going to do it exactly like this. And I'm only going to bind off the stitches that are right here in the middle. So I'm going to repeat what I did before and I'm going to measure off some yarn that I need for my bind off and, um, and then I'll use this piece as a cast on rag for my next piece. I finished the bind off on this interior piece and I stopped my bind off and left a tail on this third needle in from the end and also at the beginning. So again I'm going to use this piece as a cast on rag. I'm going to knit a row of ravel cord so I can start the next panel. And this time I'm not going to knit the other two panels. I'm only going to do the the left hand side panel just so I can finish up this project. I finished the left hand panel so now I can pull the ravel cord to separate that interior panel from this one. And this panel has live stitches on either end. So I can set that one aside and then bind this one off. So this time, since this is the left hand panel, I'm going to use a stitch marker on the opposite side of what I did the right hand panel. So I need to not bind off these last two stitches. So I'm going to mark them. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my back stitch bind off and stop at the third needle from the end. I'm going to go ahead and drop this panel off the machine since it's my last one. I'm only doing three panels. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop it off because I don't need a cast on rag anymore. And you'll see since this is the left hand panel it's going to be joined to the other panels on the right hand side.